in today's video, we're going to talk about preparing for success. I'm sure you're itching to get on call and start practicing, and honestly, so am I. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we maximize the time that you spend on call. So today, I'm going to talk about three things that will do that. The first one is what I call a squash mantra. This is three sentences that you should be repeating to yourself that you will always be thinking of when you're playing. Okay? Now, let's talk about the first one. The first one is, I watch the ball hit my strings. Now, I'm sure you've heard, watch the ball hundreds of times. And if I were to do this, you might have actually been looking at my lips. Because people don't really watch the ball when they think they do. Now, we're going to talk about that in much more detail in another video. But essentially, you need to watch the ball hit your strings. Now, I'm going to explain that because it can be a little bit difficult for people to do. What happens normally is when the ball is coming towards you, and imagine that this is happening here, what you do is just before you make contact with the ball, you look up. And you look up in the direction that you're going to hit the ball. So the most important part of the timing here is lost. Because you're looking up, because you feel that you need to keep looking at the ball. But actually you don't. What you need to do is you need to watch the ball hit the strings. Now what you'll see is you'll see a blur, and a blur of the racket, and the blur of the ball will stop. That is the moment that you keep your head still for a moment. It gives you balance, and it makes it a little bit harder for your opponent to see where the ball is going. Don't go looking up. You cannot hit a watch. You will have a headache in five shots. And that's difficult if you've never done it before. And it takes practice, which is one of the reasons that squash is so cool, because you can practice on your own and you can practice those elements. So point number one in the squash matter, watch your, the ball hit your strings. Now we'll talk about what to do another time. This is about watching it hit the strings. Okay. Point number two, I play every shot with intention. Don't hit the shot because it's your turn to hit the shot. Hit the shot because you know exactly what you want to do with it. See it in your mind. See it hit the front wall. See it bounce just past the service box. And see it bounce sick and bounce in the neck if that's what you're aiming to do. Make sure that every time you hit the ball, you know exactly what you want to do with it. Second mantra, I, I hit every shot with intention. Third sentence of the mantra, I stick to my game plan. Now often people play games and they hit some shots and afterwards you say as a coach, you say, why did you play that? I don't know, I don't really know. Because they didn't have a game plan and they didn't stick to it. Now we're going to be talking more about game plans much, much later in the video series. But this is about those three sentences, the squash mantra. I watch the ball hit my strings. I play every shot with intention and I stick to my game plan. You should be saying those things. Maybe not actually as you're playing, but all of the time, reminding yourself of those things. And that's really important. Now if you want to, you can add your own, you can add a fourth, something that's particularly important to you. I must volley more. I must play less boasts, less cross courts. I must pressure my opponent. Whatever you want. And in fact, send me them because it'll interest, it'll be interesting for me and other viewers to hear those other sports mantras. Okay? Four, but preferably three sentences. And they're all in the first person. And they're all in the present tense. It's not about I'm going to watch the ball hit the strings or anything like that. Say it as if it's true now. I watch the ball hit my strings. Okay, so that was the first part of the sports mantra. The second thing is about the full coming onto a squash ball. Now you see lots of people warming up before they, they play a match, and that's fantastic, um, but they don't warm up before they come on court. Coming on court should be like a ceremony. Now the first thing that you should do before you come on court is you should touch the ball on the outside, and this is a, an idea where you leave everything else behind. All your work worries, your family worries, any kind of other worries, they will be there when you finish playing squash or practice in squash. Touch the wall on the outside of the door before you go in, say your mantra, and leave everything behind. Because when you come onto this court, the only thing you should be thinking about is squash, nothing else. Okay? So, second part of the uh, 
uh, maximise preparation is one, warm up before you do that. And we'll talk about more about that in another video. Make sure you've got like a routine of those kind of things that you do. So it's always the same. So you know that you're warm. You see me? Sweating. I was sweating before I came onto this call. Okay. Now for the third point of this video, and this is plan your sessions. Now if you remember about the third point in the squash match room, which was I stick to my game plan, well you should have a game plan when you come on court. Last Monday I had a 2,000 shot routine and I wanted to do it in 60 minutes. I had everything worked out before I came on court. I came onto court and I did my 2,000 shots and it took me 60 minutes. And that's what should be happening every time you come on court. You should know what you're going to do, whether that be a match, whether that be a practice. Okay? So, the three points again. Number one, your squash mantra. From that you have, I watch the ball hit my strings. Two, I play every shot with intention. Three, I stick to my game plan. The second part is, you warm up before you come on court. You're sweating, you're prepared. Yes? And you touch the ball before you enter the court to leave your troubles behind. Think of this as a boxing ring. Most people don't just turn up a couple of minutes before the, the, uh, the fight and just get on court. They're there, they're preparing. That's what you should be doing, even for some of the players. And the third part is plan your session. Okay? Now let's talk a little bit more about that. Most people are good at what they practice the most. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more you practice, the better you get. You don't practice the things that you don't like doing, so you don't get better at them. Okay? Now what you need to do is you need to figure out what you're not so good at and do those things first and do them the most. In business training, there's this, this phrase, eat the frog. The frog is the worst thing that you can do in the day. If you eat the frog first thing in the morning, then anything else you do for the rest of the day will be easy. And it's the same with sports practices. If you have a particularly weak area, don't neglect it just because you don't like doing it or you're not good at it. Do it the most. Do it first. And the next point is, keep a diary. Just a cheap diary that you can buy from one of the, the pound shops or something. Um, record what you're going to do. And make sure it's not after you've done it. Record what you plan to do before you do it. And then do it, and then tick it. Now we'll be talking about more about a squash practice diary in uh, other videos. But at least for the beginning, write down what you're going to do and whether you did it or not. And as time goes on, you'll feel better about yourself because you've planned it and you've stuck to your plan. Now for the last few minutes, I'm just going to hit some side-to-side -side shots. And I want you to really watch me, hit, watch my shot hit the ball, hit my strings. Okay? I'm not looking up too much. I'm watching it hit the strings. And that's how we're going to finish. So thanks for watching. Keep practicing. And I'll see you next time.